Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to you the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Paula number no. one. All right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Timmy J. How do you feel about people calling classic bags basic? I know some people don't like them at all, but a lot of these bags are so useful. This is a fabulous question, and um, you know, it might not be the classiest response, and if you do have little kids watching, I suggest they leave the room for just a little bit. Um, but I am so sick and tired of this mentality with the whole basic thing. And my response to that is, I don't give a flying rat's ass what someone thinks about my handbags and if they think that they're basic by any means whatsoever to the full extent of that phrase because you said it perfectly, these bags are useful. You know, because I have had some people tell me, oh my God, your bags are so basic. Like everyone has that bag. Why don't you get this bag? Why don't you get that bag? Why don't you not worry about what I spend my money on? You know what I mean? I like, I know that a lot of people call the never full basic or the speedy basic or what have you. I think that those bags are fantastic. I actually had someone um, DM me on Instagram because they really wanted to get a speedy and her friends were telling her that she shouldn't get it because she's so basic, she shouldn't get it it's because of this, because of that. And I mean, I think it's, I think it's always great to get someone else's opinion, uh, especially if it's something that you might not think about. Uh, but at the same time, if you really like it, go for the speedy. Who cares if it's basic? You know what I mean? It's classic. If anything, if someone thinks that they're going to change my opinion by telling me how basic my bags are, how basic this, how basic that, it's not gonna cause me to change my bag. It's gonna cause me to change the conversation. And I feel like some people sometimes give others such a hard time. Like I see them go for the jugular on social media and they're kind of like shaming this person, if you will, because they, because they like the Neverfull. So what? Calm down, it's a bag. You know, it's a fabulous bag at that, but it's a bag to, in order, I mean, just to, to make someone feel that way, like that's, that's not cool. You know what I mean? That's definitely not cool. So I personally am over the whole mentality. I, I think it's, I think it's all about what that person likes. And most importantly, you don't owe an explanation to anybody. Like you don't have to sit there and say, well, I like it because of reason A and reason B and reason C and go into this whole laundry list of why you like the bag. Why? Why have to explain yourself for something that you like, for something you're going to spend your money on? You know, some people like trendy bags, some people don't, and that's totally fine because if it works out for their lifestyle, if it works out for their collection to have something that maybe isn't so mainstream or something that isn't heavily saturated within the population, good for them. That's great. It doesn't bother me that a lot of people have the Neverfull because like I said previously, it's kind of like a handbag club that's not so secret, you know, so I see them, they see me, we kind of lock eyes and we're like, oh yeah our bags or whatever, you know what I mean? So it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's pretty cool, especially because like you said, these bags are so incredibly useful. But anywho, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I would love to hear your thoughts on this question. Let us know in the comment section down below, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Donna Gable. How do you feel about Louis Vuitton gifting many of these influencers their newest bag, the multi-pochette? Does it make you want the bag more or less? Does it bother you? Um, all right, so I know that there's been a lot of talk about Louis Vuitton's newest bag, the multi-pochette. I know I talked about it on a previous Minx Monday and I'm a huge fan of that bag. I think it's super, super cute, uh, but it doesn't bother me at all that they gifted it to influencers and I almost expected it to happen sooner than later because a lot of these fashion houses, a lot of these brands have been using influencers to create a buzz with their newest releases or with their it bags for quite some time. You know, kind of like Dior with their saddle bag. You end up seeing it a lot more often and they end up having influencers that they gift them to and they end up picking certain ones that they know will be able to create that buzz. And it's really paid off for Louis Vuitton. You know, I know a lot of people feel very strongly about this. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of how everything's kind of gone down, but it's really paid off for Louis Vuitton to do this from a stamp, from a business standpoint, because a lot of these bags, whether you ended up picking it up uh, before it launched or you're waiting for the launch date or your boutique is waiting for the launch date, 
which is September 27th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, everything's spoken for, everything's sold out. You know, so they made this bag extremely huge and they made it extremely desirable and very, very popular in the short amount of time that it's been out. You know, so it, it was very smart on their behalf to start to move towards influencers instead of necessarily just sticking to celebrities. Because I feel like with influencers, they're a lot more relatable. They're everyday people, you know, that either started with a small channel or started with a small Instagram and they've been been able to get to where they are and be able to talk about a lot of these brands that they absolutely love or that they've talked about in the past, I think is pretty great. Now, even though I do appreciate influencers and I do ap appreciate, you know, all the hard work that they've done into to getting to where they are, um, when it comes to me wanting to add something, um, I won't go for something just because so-and-so has it. I can appreciate it on them and I like the fact that I'm able to see how they incorporate it into their lifestyle or I can hear how it ends up wearing. You know, I like to get that type of information, but I'm not the type of person that necessarily goes for something because Sally Sue has it or Billy Bob. If I end up adding something to my collection, it has to work out for my lifestyle, it has to work out for my taste, and it has to work out for my, you know, for my wallet. Um, so I, I, you know, I kind of see it a little bit differently. I know a lot of people, especially a younger generation might want to get it because so-and-so has it, you know, if that works out for them, that works out for them. But that definitely doesn't end up working out, um, you know, for me or for my wallet or, or for my, for my lifestyle. But well, I will say, and I kind of had a feeling when we talked about this in that previous Minx Monday, sometimes I feel like they ended up halting the production on the round coin purse, on the mini pochette and the pochette accessoire so that they can focus on this, which is such a bomb because those three items by themselves are amazing and someone that might want to add one or you know two out of the three might not necessarily want to go for a full-on bag that has the three at 1550 maybe they just want to go for the round point purse you know so it's kind of a bummer if that's the direction that they went in of course this is just speculation you know nothing I'm not trying to start any rumors but it kind of seems that way that they stop production on this in order to focus on that and charge a little bit more money you know, but I do think it's super, super cute, especially in the khaki. I'm a huge, huge fan. And I'm really curious to see how they end up moving towards the future because if it's been this successful, I imagine that they will start to do this more and more with a lot of their newest pieces or with a lot of their newest collections, who knows? But either way, I would love to hear your thoughts on the comment section down below because like I said previously, I know that this is a very hot topic. A lot of people feel very strongly about it. Either way, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Brianne B. How long does it take you to save for a bag? I feel like I'm saving forever and I still can't get what I want. Sometimes I feel like just getting something cheaper that I like just to get something new. Thoughts? This is an awesome question and it really depends on the bag. Some might take a few months, others might take a couple of years, but I completely understand where you're coming from. I completely understand your frustration because I have been there many, many of times. And what I have often found is that even though I will go for something that I like, you know, if it, even though I go for something that I like, I'll like it for like five seconds and then I grow tired of it and the bag that I really, really want keeps playing in the back of my mind on a constant loop. So what I say is don't settle, don't settle. And I know everyone's gonna see this differently, you know, and to each their own, but I felt like I would end up putting money aside either every check or once a month or quarterly and there were so many times when I felt so, I would I would get so irritated because it's like no matter how much I ended up saving, I still wasn't anywhere near the amount of money that I needed for that bag. So I would end up buying something willy nilly, something that didn't really have rhyme or reason and even though I thought it was cute and I used it for those five seconds like I said before, I still had the bag that I really wanted in the back of my mind constantly playing. And regardless of how many bags I got, if I felt like I, I couldn't fill the void of that one, you know? So I know it's easier said than done, but keep your eyes on the price. I promise you the wait is worth it because in my eyes, and this is another thing that I've said before, uh, in my eyes, I feel like when you finally make that bag, when you finally have that bag be part of your collection and you finally make it a realization into your collection, I feel like it's so much more satisfying. I feel like I get so much more joy out of it than getting a bag, you know, every couple of weeks or every month that's kind of cool, but you know, it's whatever. No, I feel like when you save up for it, it's just, it's just that much more satisfying, you know, because I don't have the possibility to just 
blink my eyes and I get a brand new bag. I've said this many, many of times, you know, so when I do buy a bag, I have to save up for it. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Other, other times it takes a lot longer. But at the end of the day, whether it takes, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months or a couple of years, it is so incredibly satisfying when you do because it's like, ha, ah, I finally got it. And sometimes those bags that you wait a while to add to your collection might be your holy grail bags. And when you finally have them to be part of your collection, there's just something about them. I feel like I end up enjoying them a lot more, probably because of all of the time and effort and energy that went into saving up for that bag than to just say, well, I'm just gonna get this bag on a whim, you know? But like I said, everyone is different. Everyone sees it differently. But I personally say, don't settle. Don't settle, keep your eyes on the prize and I promise you it is worth it. And hopefully you're able to, you know, to get your dream bag a lot sooner than you think. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Melinda Schaefer. Besides your dislike for the Marmont line, do you see yourself getting any other bags from Gucci? Any other style catching your eye? Um, all right, so when it comes to Gucci, I definitely have a love-hate relationship with the brand. And I used to have a few bags from the Fashion House uh, years ago, and I didn't have the best experience with them. So I ended up selling them all, and I really stayed away from, you know, from the house for a long, long time. And it wasn't until, what, two years ago when I ended up picking up the Petite Marmont Wallet on Chain. And I think that this is awesome. I love the simplicity, I love the color. This definitely works out for my lifestyle. And uh, I did use it quite a bit this past summer, you know, so I think it's great. But when it comes to a full on handbag, I seem to get a little bit nervous. And it could be because like I said before, just the experience, you know, from the past that doesn't really leave me, you know, with the best, uh, with the best memories. But there is a bag or there is a silhouette that has definitely caught my attention. Uh, unfortunately, it is available in two materials that I'm not too fond of, but the bag that I'm talking about is the Sylvie 1969. Let me insert a picture of very quickly. I think that this silhouette is incredibly gorgeous. It's simple. I just love, love, love the vintage vibes that this is giving off. Uh, but like I said before, it is available in two materials that I personally don't see myself adding to my collection, that being patent leather and plexiglass. Now, patent leather, I have had patent leather pieces in the past, and I do appreciate how they end up capturing the color, but I'm just not too fond of how they end up wearing as time goes by. And as far as plexiglass, that's definitely not my cup of tea. Now, I do believe that the plexiglass ones start off at $29.30 or $29.80, if I'm not mistaken, and the patent leather ones start off at $3,200. But if they introduce this silhouette in a completely different leather, something that was a little bit more flexible or something that has uh, that wears a lot better, I would definitely add it to my collection because I can really see myself you know, incorporating it to into my lifestyle. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Danielle. You're stranded on a deserted island, and you have one bag from your collection. Which one would it be and why? No cheating, Minnie. That, that's in all caps. What do you mean, no cheating? I don't cheat, little old me. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, anyways, real talk. If I was stranded on a deserted island, and I had one bag from my collection, hands down, it would end up being the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the monogram canvas. And the reason why I would end up picking this bag is because number one, the size alone, when I go foraging for food, I would be able to fit everything in here no problem. I don't have to worry about only carrying it, you know, within my hands or within my arms. I could fit so much in here because we already know it fits everything and the kitchen sink, right? Okay, so the size alone is great, plus, if there are coconut trees on this deserted island, which I'm hoping for, I can fit a lot of coconuts in here without the handle snapping. So that's another thing. Um, the leather, if I had to, obviously if I'm surviving, if I had to tear it apart, I can use the leather to make nets, to make traps. Um, I can use it to maybe make some type of survival tool. I don't know. Um, another thing, I can rip up the canvas and I can use the canvas for like, not shoes, but something to protect the bottom of my feet. So that way I don't have any issues if I go into the ocean or if, you know, once I go foraging, I don't have to worry about something sharp, you know, hitting me or anything like that because I think the canvas is sturdy enough um, that I would be protected for sure. But the, 
<laughs> Those are the reasons that I can think of, which are awesome reasons, I, in my opinion, why I would end up picking the Neverfull if I was <laughs> if I was stranded on a deserted island. Because I think it would be. I mean, I think there's so many other things that I can incorporate, but those are the four things, right? Four things that come to mind um, when it comes to <laughs> picking a bag for an island. But I am curious, what about you guys? If you can only pick one bag from your handbag collection, remember, no cheating because Trust me, there's a part of me that wants to cheat and add another one in there. Uh, what bag would that be? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Thus Spoke Talia. Hopefully I said that correctly. How do you feel about purchasing exclusively on the pre-love market to buy into some of the quality from vintage years? Today you're paying more for a Chanel bag that's not as well made as 20 years ago and it doesn't even come with the real gold plating. Um, all right, so as far as buying exclusively on the pre-love market for vintage pieces, I think that is an awesome idea, especially if that's something that you are looking to make your collection into because like I've said before, a lot of these vintage pieces are so well made. The canvas is a lot thicker. The leather is a lot more luxurious. It seems to be a lot more durable, you know? So I think that's great. Plus by going on the pre-love market, you are able to save some cash. Cash. Unfortunately, the prices are starting to get a little bit crazy on the pre-love market as well, even for those vintage pieces. And I mean, that's expected, especially because a lot of the a lot of the prices start to increase in the boutiques. So it's kind of like a trickle effect into the pre-love market. But as far as quality goes, the vintage pieces, I think, are absolutely, absolutely amazing. The only bummer is that on some of these um, some of these older items, yes, you can take them into the boutique and have them revamped, especially some from Louis Vuitton. There are plenty, there are so many bags that I have seen um, that are like 20 years old that if they still have the materials available to revamp them or to not revamp them, to repair them, they're able to do that. But some of these other fashion houses don't end up offering the same thing. So that's kind of a bummer. And you have to find a third party that's able to work on your pieces uh, to, the, to look the same way that you know they would have 20 years ago or 30 years ago or what have you. You know, and sometimes when you do find that third party, they might be a lot more expensive. And that's why I feel like sometimes people end up going for brand new instead of uh, pre-owned or even vintage because of that same reason. In a sense, you have a little bit, in a sense, you have a little bit more of a warranty with newer items than you do with older pieces. But as I've said pre uh, previously, Louis Vuitton does end up um, does end up repairing some items that are no longer, uh, you know, on the on their website if they still have the materials available to repair them. So I think that that is absolutely wonderful. You know, it's just a matter of personal preference. If you do like vintage pieces and you're okay with either, um, you know, going through a third party to repair them or if you really want that, you know, that quality that they used to have back in the day, I think that is absolutely wonderful. But if you're the type of person that wants a little bit more peace of mind and a little bit more warranty, then I completely understand by only wanting to go for new items, you know? But um, yeah, there are so many, so many amazing pieces on the pre-love market. I actually had a vintage bag in my cart about a week ago and I moved so slowly. I, I knew this. I was like, okay, I have to get it. It's like one of those things. Once you see it, you gotta move on it because otherwise someone's gonna take it out from underneath you. And that's exactly what happened. So whoever's out there, if they did end up buying a Speedy, congratulations on your new Speedy. <laughs> and I just keep going on, uh, you know, on my journey to find another one. But anyways, yes, vintage is awesome. Love the quality, love the history. And the fact that they also tell a story, I think is awesome. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Cindy Tompkins, hopefully I said that correctly. You made a video with your forever pieces. Since that video, have you added any other bags or items to this list? Um, all right, so yes, I have added one other bag and two small leather goods, and there's one more item that I'm like 80% sure is gonna be part of the forever list, uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys anyways. Uh, but usually when it comes to forever pieces, I am super, super picky, and uh, I feel like I have to have these items for a long time in order to know, to solidify that they're gonna be with me till the bitter end. And some of these items I haven't had for a long, long time. So some of them might surprise you. All right, so when it comes to handbags, uh, another one that I am adding to the forever list is the Chanel reissue. This definitely isn't a surprise. I absolutely love this bag. I love how comfortable it is. I love that it fits all of my essentials. I love the history. There are so many aspects that I appreciate about this bag and there aren't really any cons, you know, but um, for me anyways, but I, I'm a huge, 
huge fan of the Chanel reissue, um, especially in this combination. So this one, I even had a feeling when I, when I bought it, I had a feeling that it would make its way to a forever piece. And uh, even though I haven't had it as long as others, as I mentioned previously, I feel like I grin like an idiot. And I know I say this all the time, but I can't describe it any other way when I use this bag. I feel like I'm super giddy. I feel like I'm 12 years old all over again. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> I'm a big, big fan of this guy. Uh, as far as small leather goods go, uh, the first one is the Chanel Ozip coin purse. This also shouldn't be a surprise because I have said this many of times that this is my my favorite style of wallet. I love how compact it is, and this is the combination that I end up using the most. Uh, so this guy's definitely a forever piece. Um, another small leather good that I have is the YSL card holder and the black pebbled leather with the silver hardware. When it comes to card holders, usually it's not my preference. Um, I end up going more for a compact wallet like this instead of this. Uh, but when it comes to the YSL, it just wears absolutely fantastic. The pebbled leather I feel is so incredibly durable. I also like that it's simple, but it has a little bit of edginess to it, you know, and I've had it for years. So this one, um, I've had for four years, I think, four years, not five years, no way, four years. Um, but I, I mean, when it comes to card, flat card holders, this is my number one, by all means. My number one, it just wears fantastic. So if you are in the market for one, highly, highly recommend this guy. So these two small other goods. Um, now, when it comes to the one that is 80% that I feel is gonna be a forever piece, um, this one will definitely surprise some of you guys, but that is the Fendi Mama Baguette. Now, I know that this isn't for everybody. This isn't, this isn't everyone's cup of tea. Some people think that it's super tacky. Some people think that it's super, super loud, but I can't tell you, I can't even begin to tell you how often I use this bag. I am just crazy about it. And the same giddiness that I get when I use the Chanel reissue, I have the same thing with this one. This is kind of like my no nonsense, don't think about it, grab and go type of bag. If it's everything that I need, it's super, super comfortable. It still maintains its shape to a certain extent, you know, and um, I love it. I absolutely, absolutely love this bag. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do, and I certainly didn't expect it to possibly make it onto the forever items type of, uh, type of uh, list, but yeah. <laughs> I know this might surprise some of you, but uh, I think it is fantastic. So those are the items that I would add to this list. But I'm curious, do you have any forever items? If you do, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you had a previous list of forever pieces, have you added anything to that list? Let us know that as well. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Now, I wanted to run something by you because I was thinking about maybe doing this. Nothing is set in stone. And to be completely honest with you, I really want to get your feedback. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, but I was thinking about possibly stopping Minx Monday at 250. I know that we're at 248 and we have a couple more to go, but I am just, I'm terrified that it's going to become too repetitive as far as the, as far as the questions that I end up, um, that I end up putting in these videos, you know, because I feel like my biggest fear is that someone's watching the same, they're watching all Minx Mondays. And if I talk about something today that maybe I talked about it six weeks ago and they're like, oh, you already talked about it. Talk about something different. You know, I don't want that to happen. I don't want it to become too repetitive where it's like, oh, you're taught, you're covering the same thing over and over again. I know that it's different when we get to discuss topics that are maybe a year or two years old because my opinions sometimes change, you know, the way I see things sometimes change. So I was thinking about instead of, um, instead of having it be weekly, maybe stopping it altogether or maybe having it be twice a month or maybe once a month and have them be a little bit longer. I don't know. Uh, but like I said, nothing is set in stone. I just wanted to, I just wanted to get, you know, your opinion on it because I do like these videos. I feel like I end up connecting with you more than with any other video. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of relaxed. It's kind of like just chatting with you guys. Like we're hanging out at your house and we're just talking about bags. We're talking about this, that, or the other, you know, but, um, I don't know. I just, maybe it's just the way that I'm feeling at the moment, but, um, let me know if that's something that you think I should do or if I should just keep going because I do like them and it would be super weird. I will admit it would be super weird to not 
film Minx Monday. And I don't film them necessarily on the same day, but it's just, I don't know. <laughs> it would feel weird not to have Minx Monday. I don't know. But either way, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you want me to keep going, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, or if you think it's time to stop and say goodbye, let me know that as well. Don't worry, you're not going to hurt my feelings by any means whatsoever, you know, because like I said before, I truly care what you guys have to say. Um, but anyways, I digress. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.